Is he what you need? Is he what you need? Are you in the position that you need God? Do you need a savior? Will my soul be without your son? Give his life to save you. Rest in the thought that you're watching over me. All I need is you. All I need is you. All I need is you. Is you. Se kara hatu robo si padere bos sanda ya. Mani lili bos si nara makori ya beri andere bos si kabo si tada la basi diri andara basi kabaya tala. Lila andere bos si nara ma 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 ma. Ora ni disu. 
Is it really what you need? Is it really all that you need? Or you still have something that you're searching for? Lord, if you are not what we need, even when you appear, we will walk away. That is why this morning I bring your people before your throne of mercy. I lift them high, O God, as many who are hungry and come into the mountains of your salvation. Those who are coming to the mountains of recovery, where they will receive unction to function, where they will receive power of your surpassing greatness. O Lord, here we are. Here we are. The Lord, you will transform your people with your dynamics and you will exploit them to know more, to have more, to see more, and to accept more that they can ever think, dream, or desire. Here I am, O oh God, that you said, when I raise you up, you will energize your people. You will energize your people according to your might, your strength that worked in us. And therefore it is my prayer, as your name is being raised up higher, the dead in Christ will rise again. The hopeless in Christ will have hope again. The weak and the feeble shall receive strength to their ankles. And they will begin to leap and jump. They will begin to roll and sing a new song in their song. They will begin to shout and dance according to the joy of the salvation. Invade any territory of our comfortability. Invade any territory that we are relaxing. Oh my God, any handicaps. Recapture us, O oh God. Recapture any handicaps. In our heart, in our mind, in our senses. Revolutionizes us, O oh God. Bring a new revelation. Let deep call deep. Let deep call unto deep. And bring life out of death. Bring hope out of hopeless. Bring joy out of sadness. Turn our morning into dancing. Put a new dancing shoes on our feet. That we will rejoice and be glad in you. And we will sing with a songwriter. All I need is you. And all I can have is in you. Here we are. Lord, we know that whenever we show up, you will. Because your word says so. That if we diligently seek after you, we shall found you. May we be found in you. And may you be found in us. In the name of Jesus Christ. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 says. But to him who is able to do. Super abundantly above all that we ask or think. According to the power. Which operate in us. For him who is more, far, far above, beyond our expectation, beyond our ability to accept, beyond our ability to receive, it is my prayer that he will be revealed to us. The God who is doing things not according to our level, the God who does things not according to our ability, but according to the powers from heaven, according to the powers from the Most High, the unlimited sources, the supernatural being. He is super, 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 super. His name is beyond words. He is limited to be explained. And therefore, human beings try to find synonyms Words that are literally expressing certain acts. Do you know that every word of God, every word, human words, 
are limited to express who God is. <laughs> when we say God, it talks about all in all. When we say God, He is above, above, above all. The only person that God competes is, is with Himself. Because He is not in competition with any person. He can never be compared with any person. So Apostle Paul said that I may know the limitless nature of God's supernatural ability. It is very sad that human beings will reduce the standard of God to even human beings. My God. It is very, very sad. It is provocative. To me, it is an insult. It is an insult for me to reduce God to any other thing. Sometimes I understand Muslims a little bit that they don't want to reduce Jesus to God because they say God can never be a human being and that is where their mistake is. God loved human beings so much that he became human being that human being can become like God. Part exchange. God reduced himself because of his unlimitless ability. Because of his unlimitedness nature. Mm. He brought divinity to divinity. Uh, humanity. The divinity, the divine nature of God was reduced to humanity. The eternal God became temporal man. That lived up to 120 years on earth. And within the 120 years, that human being is no longer classified as human beings. Because either we may be... Uh, I don't know what to... Diluting water. We need to dilute the water again. We need to reduce water to become water. Before they can drink. You don't understand. When you go to hospital, there are some people, they can't drink water. So what they need to do is, they put in some kind of a thick uh, material that reduces the water to become like soak gare. That they can eat that condensed water as water. Some of them, we, they put something like a sponge. They call it sponge. It is a foam. That they put stick on it. Because that person cannot drink water. My God. At the age of 60, 70, people can drink water. <laughs> Some of them have drank alcohol too much. So they can't drink anything. Some of them had had a whole lot of cigarettes and many other things to destroy their throat. When I look at people who want to live here on earth for long... <laughs> I ask them, do you understand what you mean? I have stopped crying when somebody dies. I have stopped it. Because I believe that death is gain of humanity. Satan thought. Satan thought that he was doing human being harm. But I have come to know that it is a privilege. But Paul said to die is gain. To die is gain. Why? Because you are out of curse. You are out of sickness. You are out of problems. You are out of anxiety. You are out of the hands of Satan. A child of God. Your death should be something that you celebrate. You might not understand. I hear some Africans saying that we are going to Europe for greener pasture. There is no greener pasture here. <laughs> there is no greener pasture. 
You might be living in Africa. You earned, let's say, 120,000. It depends upon your currency. That 120,000 cities, Nara, whatsoever your currency is. To be honest with you, you can live very peaceful life. If you are not a proud person, that you want everybody to know that you have arrived. And if you want to live according to your means, you don't dress because people want you to wear that one for them to know that you have it. But you live a modesty life. If you don't need car, you don't drive car. You can drive your bicycle, ride your bicycle, all right. If you don't need brand new dresses, you don't wear them because nobody cares and nobody pay for you. Well, so that 120,000, your currency may be equivalent to 100 pounds, which might be somebody one hour salary, which might be two hours, which might be somebody like us one day salary, even not up to the equivalent. What do I mean? So you will hear a pastor saying that I live in America and when I went, I live in Europe, a Christian brother or sister says that. One hour they pay me $20. They pay me 20 pounds. So 20 times 8 will give us how many? $160 a day. You may be just biting your teeth. Look at this person. I have the same qualification. He received 120 thousand pounds a day. Which is almost equivalent to my one month pay. Brother, hold on for a bit. Hold on for a bit. I have not sold you the insurance that I pay every day. I have not told you the electricity that I pay. I have not told you the gas. I have not paid you the rent. I have not paid you the food. I have not paid you the children's school fees. Oh, you, uh, now you're understanding it. So, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, now I'm better off. Every condition of this life has been leveled in such a way that if human beings want to live a better life, a better life is only in Christ. That is the point I want to bring you. Don't envy people because some people who return from the greener land and bring all these things, either they are in depth. When they remain back home in their home country for long, they might be arrested. When they come back to America, to Europe, their rent or their house, they might be kicked out of their room. If you are living in Africa and you have something to eat, something to drink, something to wear, please be content. Life of contentment is a great gain. What am I saying? What I'm trying to tell you is... Death from this earth is the end of human stress from every level. So, Brother Gabriel, are you telling me I should go and die? No, that is not what I'm trying to say. But I want you to understand what death is. It's a profit. It's a gain. Apostle Paul says it. To die from this world is a gain. My, I was talking to my wife, and she was telling me some people that she deals with at the workplace. As convict, drug addicts, people who are going through all kinds of problems and they literally inflict pains upon themselves that they will be brought into psychiatric hospital. They intentionally inflict pain upon themselves. Why? Because they can't feel comfortable. He said, one patient said, honey, you know what, darling? The only place that I feel comfortable is this hospital or in prison cells. Do you understand what life is? The only place that human being, radical and rational human being, having his five senses, learn, have a qualification. He could be somebody who was a lawyer or a doctor some time ago, but he never valued life. He has taken drugs, alcohol, and therefore he has become addicted to it.
And in that addiction, he has no peace. He needs to go and borrow money. He needs to go and buy things on credit. And he says, the only place I have peace of mind, that I am not being persuaded, that I am not being tormented, that I am not being chased after, is to be in psychiatric hospital or to be in prison cells because there nobody knocks your door, because there nobody troubles you. Do you understand what life is? Somebody wish to be in your situation. Some Christians don't know what Christ has redeemed us from. When I hear all these things, and nobody rush after me, I am not running away from police. I am not running away from any human being. The only person I don't want him to see my face is Satan. <laughs> I hate him to the court. So does he. He doesn't like me at all. If there are one of the people that Satan hates, I believe Gabriel, I am one of them. He hates me. Why? Because I was made in an image of Jesus Christ. Because it was all my foolishness. With all the Satan, I listened to him, Satan. And Jesus was stand and say, Gabriel, if you go, that Satan is going to kill you. Don't go. And I say, hey, devil, you are a liar. Is that how you are? To hell with you. He is angry at me. I was made in an image of God. And Jesus came to die for me. And even as I am so alive, his death is still working on my behalf. And therefore Satan hates me. You don't know who you are. You don't know who you are. You wouldn't trade with Satan within a second. You will never have a business with him. If he is your business partner, if he is your consultant, if he is your advisor, if he is your encourager, if he is your motivational speaker, you will hate him and say, get to hell, Satan. And you have them as your lawyers. You have Satan as your consultant. You have Satan as your political figure. You have Satan as your, as your, uh, 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 as your celebrities. The devil is a liar. As a role model, he speaks to you every day. The newspaper that you read, it is for Satan. The TV that you watch is for Satan. That film that you like, the actor you like him or her much, she is working for Satan. The doll, the baby doll that you have bought for your children is for Satan. The children program that always you want to you want to silence your children with. You think you are doing your children very hey hey children come 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 and watch TV and leave me alone, sister. You don't know what you are doing to your children. You allow Satan to train them. You allow Satan to train them. The surpassing greatness of Christ, what he has redeemed us from. Many of us, we don't know. And when we tell you, you are with attitude. No, oh, wow. everything is Satan. Everything is devilish. Oh, oh. Second Corinthians chapter 3, chapter 4, verse 3 and 4. The prince, the god of this world. Sister, brother has blinded you. He has made you blind. He is fooling around your hearts. And therefore you fight against things that are supposed to save you. You fight against things that are supposed to liberate you. You fight against things that are supposed to keep you in peace. You fight against peace. You fight against good health. You fight against pro prosperity, proper prosperity. <laughs> You fight against it. I asked my father one side. That daddy, why did you marry my mother after you have married your first wife, giving ten children with that woman? And then you come to my mother again. Is that daddy you wanted to make many children? He look at me and says, son, you are coming. You will understand the reason why I made that foolish mistake. Basically, you were one of the reasons why. <laughs> I had to give birth to you, but I had already married. My father told me, son, until I marry your wife, your mother, sorry. Until I married your mom, I never had peace. I never understood what marriage is. Do you understand my father answered to me? I've married, wasted money on this woman, giving birth 10 children. 
and came to marry my mom my brother who is the tenth child of my father he is one year older than the one I come after my senior brother who is three years older than me my father tenth born is one year older than his eleventh born which is my, 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 my mother's son so my question is how can dad live with such a period long time and never had peace he will keep you in perfect peace if your mind is on God I still couldn't forgive my father for practicing polygamy he looked at me from a different level because he said that you I know you are the only person that can ask me this question none of my children have been able to stand the way he looked at me that was why he I think he thought ladies and gentlemen what am I talking about I am talking about the light that shine in darkness to reveal the dark dark in the heart of men my father was shocked my father was, I have little children and my last daughter she asked me so many questions brothers if that girl asked me a question I need to sit up well before I can answer her she is eight she asked me questions that I must be very very careful what am I talking about I am talking about when you live under the atmosphere of light everything that comes out of that place reveals darkness when you raise up your children in light that is what the Bible says: raise up children the way that they should go and when they grow they will not depart from it many people many Christians have failed to raise their children in the knowledge and in the wisdom of God brothers and sisters who are so alive who are shining sin and evil I beg you whatsoever you are not doing don't allow your children to do I beg you if you are not drinking and you believe that drinking alcohol is evil please raise up your children in such a way when they see a person who is alcoholic they will question that person why are you drinking to destroy yourself raise your children in that manner don't raise your children with television don't raise your children deliver the future of those children please i beg you my dad told me you are coming instead of dad sitting me down and say son before you marry be very careful pray pray spend time to pray for god to give you your wife spend time and you save your life for the rest of your life go before god if it will take one year two years three years four years before god will give you your wife son do that i made a mistake that i never have joy that was what my father was telling me but he lacked knowledge and wisdom with the holy spirit to tell me this so the answer that he gave me that your son you are coming my god it was a curse son you are coming you are going to fall into the same pits son you are coming you are going to have the same experience and you may throw out your wife and go and pick another wife so when my daddy told me that i said that okay it reached a level in time that i saw that the word of father said was echoing in my spirit son you are coming whenever i have any misunderstanding with my wife i hear that echo son you are coming it was a warning sound that the holy spirit has safeguarded my life not to make the same mistake that my father did what are we talking about here if our parents refuse to train us the way of god live and give us and that is where christianity has fallen for two thousand years now jesus came to die in two thousand years ago but people did not understand the way christianity the mandate and the purpose and the way it's supposed to be ruled and therefore christianity had been misunderstood a young nice has a uh, man came to our meeting yesterday this boy is in the entire ministry what he does is he goes around 
having a, a signboard and written Jesus is coming soon. He is on the street. He is on the street preaching to people to be saved. He came to our meeting yesterday and found out that he is not saved. He witnessed yesterday from the first time that he is not saved. He had had an encounter with Jesus Christ, yet he is struggling with addiction. He is struggling with substance misuse and abuse. Maybe you are like that. You are preaching the gospel to people, yet you are not saved. Mm. Come here. Let me talk to you, sister. You are preaching to people to be saved. Yet you are wearing and you are dressing like Satan. Yet you are thinking and living like Satan. You are living in hell. Yet every day you rejoice. Yeah, 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 yeah. My God is so good. Oh, sister. Everything a double, double. Sister, do you know how many doubles that you are receiving into your life that are cursing? Christianity has been brought in such a way. That people think if you confess Jesus as your personal savior, that's it. No, it goes beyond that. If you confess Jesus and he's not able to totally 100% deliver you from the power and the influence of sin and Satan. That is what my definition of Christianity is. To be saved means to be under the influence of the dynamic power of God. The surpassing greatness of his unlimited resources available for every child of God who want to make heaven, heaven, heaven. And therefore, the person live heaven on earth. He drinks heavenly water. He eats heavenly food. He dress heavenly attire. He speak heavenly language. It's your life not around such environment. Now I am afraid, I am afraid that you are worshipping an unknown God and his name is Satan, his name is Lucifer, his name is the world, his name is not Jesus. Mragebra, but uh, we are all struggling, sister, I am not. I am not. <laughs> Everybody have weaknesses. Sister, I am not. Let a weak say, I am strong. Let a poor say, stop defining yourself by what Satan is saying to you. In Christ alone, our weaknesses are taking over. His strength makes us who we are. We become who he is. He made us change. He made us change. He who knew no sin, he became sin. The I, my God, the righteousness of God. He became poor. The I, my become rich. He became sick and tired. The eye will become strong and willing. Mm. Mm. He who, who knew no, what does it mean? He who, who have nothing to do with sin. He didn't sin, but he identified himself with sin without becoming sinful. You and me need to live in this life every day. You and me need to live in an environment every day by not conforming into the likelihood of the world. Ladies and gentlemen, 2 Corinthians chapter number 5, the verse 21 says this, He, Jesus Christ, became whom you were supposed to be and that we might become who he is. He has taken over our weaknesses. He has taken away my sins. And he gave the Holy Ghost to me. The man of Calvary. He has done something that your mother couldn't do. He has done something that my papa couldn't teach me. That's why I love him. Somebody might ask me, Brother Gabriel, why do you love Jesus? 
I love Jesus. Because what my father didn't know, Jesus knows it. What my father couldn't give me, Jesus has given to me. What my mommy who lost me so much, who didn't abort me, who always looking for my best, she didn't know how to raise me to know the best. Jesus has given me the best. The surpassing greatness of knowing him. Everything I am is because of him. Everything I have is because of him. Everywhere I can be is because of him. I don't know about you, but with Jesus on our side, we can become whatsoever he say he is. We can become whatsoever he wants us to be. We, we, you and me, I am not excluding you. The love that he has for us, when we accept it, the sky will be our limits. Heaven will be our final destination and God will be our measurement. Are you listening to me, somebody? The surpassing greatness of knowing Jesus Christ. Some of us, we don't know him. Do you know him, mama? Do you know him? Do you know him? My God. My God. My God. My God. My God. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, heal the man and ask him. <laughs> hey, do you know? Do you know the one who healed you? Mama, 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 le 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 la basu de re ba la ba 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 ba. Do you know him? Do you know him? Jesus will always ask a question to seek for your readiness for him to pour out himself to you. The Pharisees, the Pharisees. Ask the man after Jesus had asked him the same question. Do you know the one? Do you know the one who healed you? Mm, 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 mm. Do you know the one who healed you? And the young man said, I don't know. I don't know. But one thing I know, one thing I know, I was once blind, but now I can see. I was once lost, but one now I can hear. I am found, I am found. Yay, yay. Mandela Lebosata, he came a little I don't know about you, but the day you meet Jesus, there is a part exchange. There is a part exchange. He take your mess and he will give you his light. He will take your darkness. He will take your gloom and give you his light. He is. He is. Turn your Bible with me into the book of John chapter number nine. Mandela le 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 wasenda. If I live a holy life, shine the wrong and do the right. I know the Lord will pave the way for me. If I live a holy life, 
but how can I unless it comes into my life? Shine the Lord and walk in the light of gold. I know the Lord. Sin the Lord, 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 sin the Lord. I know the Lord who paved the way for me. I know my Savior, sister, Jesus who paved the way where there seems to be no way for you. If you can live a holy life, you discipline yourself I hate the sin of life I know my Jesus you pay the way for you and as Jesus passed by he saw a man who was born blind his birth from birth his disciple asked him, saying, Master, who sinned, this man or his parents? Then he was born blind. Jesus answered and said, You are mistaken. It is neither he, this man, or his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifested in him. Wow. What did Jesus say? <laughs> this man is not at fault. This person was created in this condition to greet the occasion of my manifestation. Wow. When a friend be a water crown was last year, then I used to go to And that's your free business. I said, I'm Papa, I'm going Na na mama ye de bon ye niana. Na na Yesu se da bi o. Akole wa nya bon da. Na mama so anya bon bi a. Na mimi nti. Se de be ya mo mo bi hunu se. Oni pa ba no wo tumi a wo de fre eti ni pe ni. Ye wo no se de be ya meti ni. O ti asie se na ye. How can you understand this? How can you understand? This person has done nothing that should result to this. But God made him so. God made him so that the same God will reveal to him mankind that he has limitless ability, limitless resources, limitless power, limitless knowledge, limitless faculty. Oh my God. Oh my God. Hmm. Jesus answered, Not that this man know his parents sin, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is a day. The night cometh when no man can walk. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. As long as I am in your life, I am the light. As long as I am in your situation, I am the light. When you bring Jesus into every mess, he will make it a message. When you bring Jesus into every situation, he will make it mm, an institution. Mm. <laughs> when you bring Jesus into any miscondition, he will make it a better, a better and air conditioned environment for your life. Where do you want him to be? He intentionally allows some situation to mess up. That he'll bring a message out of. He's making a message out of this blind mess boy's life. What is the mess of your life? What is the mess, sister? Bring Jesus in. And your life will become a witness and a testimony. When he has said this. He spat on the ground, made clay with a spittle, and he anointed the eye of the blind man with a clay, and said unto him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which interpreted sent. 
Go and wash my God into the pool of sand. A place that you have been sent to go. Go and do it. Why do we? Why can't we receive what God has for us? Because we are not willing to follow his instructions. The instructions that you follow will determine the future that you are dreaming and that you can create. What is the instruction and whose instruction are you receiving? The boy was sitting down. All that he saw that Jesus jumped on him. <laughs> hey, 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 what is it? What is it? Jesus said, shh, shh, shut up, shut up. <laughs> Let me do what I'm doing. Hey, do you remember that there was a boy? There was a boy that was running away. His name was Jacob. There was a man that God has anointed. His name was supposed to be Israel. His mother named him a supplanter. Jacob, a deceiver. The one that hold the heels of his brother. They name him according to the battling that he was going through with his brother. Which they couldn't finish until they came on earth. My divine Bible tells me that Jacob was lying down. All of a sudden, somebody jumped on him. <laughs> the angel of the Lord jumped on him and began to baffle him. He said, hey, 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 we don't do it in this way. They wrestle, and the Bible says that, and Jacob wrestled with the angel until the day breaks. And when it was about a daybreak, the angel saw that, no, I can't succeed. <laughs> there is no way. I can't, I can't do it unless he permits me. I can't do it without his permission. God is always looking for people to change them. Hey! He can't force you without your permission. He will never do it. He jumped on David, uh, Jacob. Let me change you. Jacob said, no, you can't. Hey! hey he tweeted Jacob. He said, hey, Jacob said, where are you? <laughs> you don't know whom you're dealing with. <laughs> hey! The angel of the Lord! His name was Jesus! Jesus, there is something about his presence that redeem a person from his bondage. It was about a daybreak. And Jesus told Jacob, Jacob, eh, sorry, it is about a daybreak. I don't want your children to see this. We are grown up people. We can't do it. We can't fight this. When we were little children, we, we used to do that. Sometimes we're playing a game, we call it Dambales. <laughs> we roll like that. And sometimes we, we wrestle. Ah, in my language, in my Ghanaian language, we did at in time. We time the show, and also do what time the show. So, in fact, it was a daybreak. And the angel of the Lord told Jacob, Jacob, we can't do this. This is, this is not children game. So, please let me go. Jacob said, lie, lie. Lie, lie. You can't go until you change my name. Until you bless me. Do you know what blessing means? Blessing means change of your state that affect every area of your life. When Jesus comes into our life, he changes our name. He changes our dirty name. Gabriel the alcoholic. Gabriel the humanizer. Gabriel uh, uh, the drug addict. He has changed those names. I was heading towards that. Oh my God. I was heading towards that. I was heading towards using my money to play Lotto. I was heading using my money to look for women. To look at the nakedness of women. Because that was where I knew. That was the family I brought for. My father married two. My grandparents, they all married two, 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 two. All my uncles, some have three and four. My cousins, hey, some of them, they will leave Bible and go and marry women. <laughs> that was where I was heading towards. Jesus has saved me. I don't know the disgrace. That you might be heading towards. One of my cousins. He was drinking and sleeping in Gotha. He was a cousin. My goodness. If it happened to my cousin. It could have happened to me. The devil is a liar. If you live in an environment. That Satan can influence your life. This is where we were heading towards. And Jesus came and said. Give me those things. And let me change you. This is my surpassing greatness. I take you from one place. Into a place of honor. He said, leave me, let me go. Jacob said, lie, lie, change me. I am tired. I am tired with wrestling. I have wrestled with my brother from whom? I have wrestled with my daddy. I have wrestled with my mommy. I am still wrestling. I went to my uncle and I wrestled with my uncle. Why? 
Why is it so? What have I done wrong? And now you have done for me. You are messing with me. And you want me to let you go. You're not changing me. Change me. Change. Whenever you meet Jesus, don't let Jesus go until he changes you, darling. And are you willing and you ready for his change? Are you willing and you ready for his change? The change of God comes with only one question. Who do you think you are? The angel of the Lord asked Jacob, What is your name? What is your profession? What is your character? Your name reflects on your character. Sister, your name is not good. Because the character has given you that name. What is the name? The surpassing greatness is about to manifest in your life. He will change that dirty name and give you a beauty. Hey, 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 please be careful. No, 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 no. No, that name is gone. <laughs> hey. hey. Do you remember sometimes when you go to your village, your hometown, where you grew up? They have some names for you. And they say, no, 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 that name is gone. Ah, ah, ah. You, oh, this, this is when we were little children. Why are you still using this name? It's gone. May Jesus change the name that the mockers used to mock you with. When you give Jesus a chance, darling, that name will be erased because that is not the name in heaven. He is going to give you a new name, surpassing greatness. Surpassing greatness of knowing Him is a change of name that affects our destiny. That affects our destiny. A change of name. A change the boy was born blind. The Bible never mentioned his name. So that was the name. Jesus changed his name and that day his name was changed. Ah, who is the born boy blind? That guy. Is he a blind? No, no, he but what is his name? Is that his name? No, 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 no. <laughs> we used to call him like that, but uh, this is his name. <laughs> Every time your name be changed, he will. God, that's what he does for a living. He changed. Uh, uh, yesterday, my senior daughter was asking me, Dad, why is it that God changed the name of Abraham to Abraham? I said, Darling, before Abraham knew God, he was called Abraham. And when he met Jesus, Jesus changed his name and called him the father of nations. Mm. And, and, and she said that that what did God change the name of Sari into Sarah? I said, darling, it's the same. The God that changes name, which is the surpassing greatness of knowing Him. He changes our name and our destiny. He changes every aspect of us. <laughs> he does it well. He does it profoundly and beautifully. In those days that we were struggling to come up with these so many silly things, He take it off. And give us a glory and honor. Yay. Yay. He will. He will. He will change that name. He will change that name that people are giving to you. Back home when we were little children. I used to have a very big ears. Which was improportional to my skinny skin. So they have name. I used to have runny nose. I mean I don't know. I was born with it. I pray to God to heal me on that. He hasn't done it. <laughs> but I'm not worried. Because I'm not ashamed of it. It is part of life. <laughs> you hear me blowing my nose every day. <laughs> yeah. My Jesus can do it, but he hasn't done it. But I don't, I don't hold him responsible for that. <laughs> oh! If he hears me fail up, because I can live with it. <laughs> Apostle Paul said, in order not to assault myself beyond measures, in order not to raise myself above measures, the Lord allowed Satan, the agent of sin, to strike me. And I pleaded in three times, and the Lord says, my grace is sufficient to you in times of your weaknesses. Sometimes he takes all the weakness and leaves one. <laughs> that will always reconnect us to him. He does it on purpose. This boy was not born blind. Jacob was not given the name Jacob. That he will wrestle with God. That he will wrestle with God and wrestle with the eternity of his loins. Will wrestle with the eternity. He will serve his children, children, to Jacob. We are the children who are pursuing God. His 
brother was pursuing the gift. He said, no, 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 no. No, you can't overtake me. And Jacob is still running the race. Jacob is still interceding. Jacob, Israel is still interceding for you and me. That we will become parts of the kingdom that God is raising. Jesus looked at his face and said, they called you Jacob. That's not the name that I give to you. You are not a deceiver. You are struggling to come out. But you are using your own strength. From today, your strength have taken it off. I'll give you another strength. The Bible said that he gave him a new name and called him Jacob. Israel, sorry. He said, your name is Israel. He did not give him only a name. But he also reduce his strength the bible said that he touched the joints and when jacob woke up the angel didn't fix it he left it like that <laughs> he changed his name <laughs> but he took a power from his legs so when jacob woke up he was limping from that day jacob never regained the strength so whenever somebody is going to attack him he will lean upon his staff and say, your rock and your staff, they that comforts me. That was where David got that psalms from. He learned from his grandparents, his grandfather Jacob. The Bible said that when Jacob was about to die in the book of Hebrews chapter 11, when he was blessing his children's children, he was leaning upon his staff. His socket was reduced. Jesus, when he changes your name, he takes off. The power of sin from you. That you can no longer stand. And declare that it is your making. The surpassing greatness of knowing Christ. Let me take you back to John. Chapter 9 again. The verse 9, 7. Jesus said go into the pool of Siloam. Wash your face. He went his way therefore and washed. And came back seeing. The instructions. Throw that thing out instructions jonah said throw me into the sea and there will be peace jesus said let the dead bury their dead jesus said unless you must be born again you can't see the king every word that he has said remain the same it works are you willing to have him change your life the surpassing greatness of knowing christ the surpassing the surpassing experience of knowing jesus right there are benefits the man obeyed Jesus Christ and that day his name will change from a blind man to the man that Jesus healed. <laughs> the neighbors therefore and those who before had seen that he was blind said, is it not this that sat and begged? Is that not a beggar? Is that not Auntie Atai's son? Is that not Saint Amor's son? Sister Felicia, is that not your boy? Hey, Agi, is that not your son? It's not that you're made. Those people who used to see you. That used to discourage you. That used to scorn. That you live under their mercy seed. People will throw money on your foot. Now you are going to stand and challenge them. They saw him and asked. Is that not the beggar who used to sit here and beg? What happened? Some said that it is he. Others said that it is not. And he said, Yes, I am. Everybody say, I am what business in your honor. I am part. Did you meet me? No, no. Where did you meet me? You're a Sasha Bre. So, the Fini Manoa. So, the other Jana, where you son of Mana. Over Kata or son of Mama or by yourself for you. If you can give Jesus your nakedness, you become prophetess to nation. People will come to you and say, Mama, teach us how to dress. Hey, people will come to you and say, Sister, show me how to live as a wife. Brother, teach me how to live as a husband. My God. Some say that it is he. I just said that he is like him. But he said, Yes, I am he. <laughs> you are the only person that can define yourself when Jesus changes you. Yes. Your school teachers will say, Ah. Is that another that stubborn boy? He, that guy. Wow. I know he could do that. Now they are changing their dialogue about you. I know. 
You know that that boy, I saw that something was in him. <laughs> that was why I was very, very careful the way I was dealing with him. Be very careful, people, that you disrespect. Tomorrow you might go and bow before them. God can change people's destiny. God can change people's life. And the, 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 the class, your student, will become your doctor. Who is going to save your life at a dying bed? The boy that your, your daughter wanted to marry, that you refused because he came from a poor family. You may travel and go and meet that boy in a place that he is going to save you. Life are injunctions. And every junction that we reach, we have opportunity to make a decision. Be very careful. Life is made up of interrelated decision. And every decision is a junction. Every decision is transition. That will take you into another level of life. And when decision is needed and it is not made, it leads man into eternal crisis. You might be in crisis, but I'm here to tell you, when you give the life to Jesus Christ, he will take you into places that you have never dreamt. He will take you to people that you have never thought to see. He will let you to become answer to people that you never thought that they exist. Verse 10, John chapter 9 verse 10. Therefore they said to him, how were their eyes open? Beloved, this is a question of a mystery. They were surprised to see that that boy has received his sight. Is it sin for me to receive my sight? No, 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 no. We want to know how it happened. They have heard a story about his eyes being opened. They have come to interrogate him. Those people that were looking for you to remain in your situation will come back and say, Adwa, how did it happen? Sometimes people want you to remain there. People are laughing at you when the change comes. People are questioning your change. People who are doubting your change. It's not that they don't want you to be changed. But they don't like it to see you in that mood. They don't like it because you put them to shame. Because you cause them to be a mockery. You call them to be failures. You define their state. May your new life define the state of people who look down upon your future. People who define you by your present. Ladies and gentlemen, it does not matter what you are going through. Your destiny is in the hands of Jesus Christ. People will come back and ask you how did it happen. And you show them how you made it. Everybody is looking for a way out. But not everyone when the door open is willing to come out. And those who come out first, they become teachers to teach others to come out. Oh my God, what a wisdom. Every person is looking for a way out. But not everybody has the strength to come out. But those who have the courage and the boldness to come out, they become teachers. They become guidians. They become instructors that instruct people to do. Are you with me? Oh my God. I wish I can listen to Bragebra every day. Hmm. That's time. They asked him, how did your eyes open? How? And the person that teaches how is a person that knows how to come to how. <laughs> and the one that can direct people from how direction are people who knows where that direction will take them. Do you know where the direction of Jesus Christ will take you? You don't know that is what I'm talking to you. I am a living witness to that. I am a living witness. The one who died and rose again. The one who forgives sins. The one who are taking away my shame and my reproach. The one who are taking away my disgrace and certain things I can't tell you in public. <laughs> Jesus has done it all. He said, Brother Gabriel, is there anything you can't say in public? Yes. That one is between me and my God. <laughs> oh, he has taken me away from many, many disgraceful things. He will take you. That you will tell people. And everything I'm telling you to stop. Jesus had taken me from it. Stop alcoholism. Stop homosexuality, lesbianism, pornography. Hey, masturbation. Hey, uh, smoking. Hey, gossip. Envy. Jealous. Unforgiveness. Jesus has taken me from them all. 
You say, Bragira, you did it all. Yes. <laughs> I was born into it. So I was about to graduate. And Jesus saw that, no, no, if we allow this boy on that direction, he will destroy himself. So Jesus saved me. What he has saved us from is not thing that we have done. Things that we had the potentials to do. Things that we have the quality to do. We were brought up in that environment as thieves. We were brought up, we, were, we weren't giving birth as thieves, but we were brought up in an environment. I don't believe the teaching that says that we were born sinless. No. But we were born into sinful environment. And therefore, when we began to learn, everything that we pick up in life was sin. But the surpassing greatness of knowing Jesus Christ encounter with him would disarm and dislocate you and totally would destroy and paralyze you not to do those things again when you see people doing them you tell them brother this thing will hurt you this thing will bring hurt everything that jesus wants us to go out of is thing that will bring us hurts therefore they said unto him verse 10 verse 11 he answered and said, A man who is called Jesus made me made clay, anointed my eyes, and said unto me, Go to the pool of Siloam and wash. And I went and washed, and I received my sight. So simple. <laughs> so simple. Jesus did what he has to do. He gave the instructions. When I followed the instructions, I got my expectation. That is how Christianity is all about, sister. He's telling you to fast. Sister, fast. He has done everything. Your reward is behind it. The secret of Christianity. The secret. The secret of relationship with Christ is obedience. It's faith. Faith in him and obedience to do everything that he says. That is the secret. Do you want to know it? That's it all. The day you obey what he says, follow what he says, brother, you are eternally separated from disasters. Then they said unto him, Where is he? He said, I know not. They brought the Phara they brought him to the Pharisees. <laughs> hey. Now where the man said, I will see the more cases. I will say I knew be an appeal with you. Ah, sure. Money, brother. Money, that's not true. Okay, so be a the person who go heaven. Hey, oh boy, when you're Christian, you be a minyana. Hey, hey, oh boy, are you a moya? Yay! Jealousy. It's not everybody that is looking for your well-being, madam. It's not everybody that is looking for your well-being. So don't tell your story to everybody. He told every secret to them. Jesus came. He spat on the ground. He put a clay on my eyes. Asked me to go and wash my face. They arrested him. And br <laughs> they brought him to the Pharisees. Those people who have generated themselves into a high position in political parties. Self parties. They have become judges. God didn't create the Pharisees. They created it themselves because Pharisees weren't Christians. <laughs> hey! They brought, the, they brought him to the Pharisees. Hey! What? But what, what, what had this thing got to do with them? Hey! That Jesus will be exalted in the Pharisees. Allow them to come. And let Jesus magnify himself. It was a summer day when Jesus made a clay and opened his eyes. That is a problem. <laughs> yeah! Yes, if anyone said, Whoa! He always provoked life that people will know him more. He's not a showman, but he is in the central parts of every mystery that man can ever lay. He is not a showman, but he is in the middle of every human change. No drastic change can take place in a man's life without involvement of Jesus Christ. No change, better change. No change, good change. No change, holy change. No change, righteous change can take a place in a man's life without without the active participation of Jesus' hand. 
Jesus had done what he shouldn't have done according to human level of understanding. And therefore, the Pharisees also asked him, How had he, how he received his sight? He said unto them, He put clay upon my eyes, wash and do, now I can see. Therefore, some of the Pharisees said, This man is not God, because he keep not the Sabbath day. Others said, How can a man who is not who is a sinner do such a miracle? And there was a division among them. May God set confusion among your people. It is he, some say it's not. And he says, It's me. He had to talk. They brought him to the Pharisees. This man is not God. He's not a Christian. He is not God. He said, I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> you people are very bad people. You are very wicked people. I know today I know you. You are very wicked people. You don't like me good. Oh my God. Is that how you are? I was born blind from, the, from childhood. This is the first time I'm seeing the beautiful flower, the beautiful tree. What sin have I committed against you? Why do you want to do this thing against me? So you like me to be in that blindness forever? No, 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 brother, please don't, 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 don't misunderstand us. Oh, no, 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 I can't understand. <laughs> People try to defend the defenseless points. No, sister, please don't get me wrong. Hey, if you know what you're saying is true, we don't apologize. I don't apologize telling you that if you don't repent, you're going to hell. Every pope that stands in front of me, I'll tell the pope, hey, young man, if you don't repent, you go to hell. I don't care who you are and the qualification that you have. They said unto him, This man is not a Christian. He is not God. He said, I'm not saying that he's God. Some say that he's a sinner. And there were disputes among them. They said unto the blind man again, What sayest thou of him that he has opened our eyes? Tell us. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Can you tell us who he is? <laughs> <laughs> they said preach to us when you saw him i think he opened your eyes did you see him they said no i didn't see him when he opened my eyes i never saw him again what said thou of him that he had opened our eyes he said he is a prophet but the jury did not believe concerning him that he had been a blind and received his sight until they called the parents of him that have him that had received his sight did you hear that the whole thing got involvement. Hey, who told you that what you are going through doesn't involve people? You don't know what your miracle will do. It will attract people. People from political standard. People from your family. This more healing is a miracle that has involved. When your name is changed, sister, it affects every person around you. When you are living in sin, nobody cares. But when you become righteous, Jesus will change you, sister. And you preach to politicians. People will come to you for knowledge and understanding. Elderly men will come to you for counseling and wisdom. And you give to them. Why? Because Jesus is on your side. In him that you live and earn your being and earn your understanding and knowledge. In him. They call the parents of that boy. We don't believe you. Hey, hey. What is his parents? Go and call the parents. The parents came. And his parents also answered them. We know that this is our son. And that he was born blind. Yes. We have the certificate. This is it. Your, one of your guys issued it to him. Yeah. He was born blind. This is his birth certificate. Everything is like that. Yeah. Uh, that's, that is your problem. Me, please. I don't know anything about it. The parents wouldn't like to put themselves into trouble. So, but. By what means now he see? We know not. Or who will open his eyes? We know not. He's of age. Ask him. He shall speak of himself. <laughs> you know some parents are like that please don't involve me when he was getting his sight I wasn't there he came home that he, his, his eyes he has received his sight he's of age ask him and let him tell you what happened to you ask him this thing has nothing to do with me the words spoken by his parents these were spoken to his parents because they feared the Jews. For the Jews had agreed already that if any man confessed that he was Christ, he should be put out of the synagogue. Oh. What? 
Do you think that people, the hatred of Jesus Christ started in Africa? No. You think that people, the hatred of Jesus Christ started in Africa? No. It started in his era, 2000 years ago. The church has been blind, synagogue. They were blind before he came and he came to set the captives free and give recovery of sight to the blind. Yet, they were They said, we are not blind. He said, oh, I wish that you were blind that I could heal you. And since you are not blind, your blindness remains. Your inability to accept what Jesus has for you will never change your situation. Sister, it's not a curse. Brother, there is a curse on my family. Pastor, pray for me that the curse will be broken. And you accept it. Accept it and turn away from it. But Pastor, this thing is very difficult. Okay. Jesus Juniors will pray. In the name of Jesus, Jesus will say, hey, hey. teach the person to turn away from that sin. Stop that foolishness. That is why I don't waste my time on that. I'd rather teach you how to walk away from sin and pray to God that Jehovah Hamashiach will change your situation. Therefore, said his parents, he is of age, asked him. Verse 24 of John chapter number 9. Then they again called the man who was blind and said to him, Give God the praise. We know that this man is not a sinner. We know that this man is a sinner. Sorry. We know that he's a sinner. Give glory to God. The boy answered and said, Whether he be a sinner or not, I know not. One thing I know that I was blind. One thing that where I was, I was blind, but now I see. Then said they to him, Again, what did he do to thee? He opened he the eyes. He answered them and said, I have told you already. And he did not hear. Why would you hear it again? Would you hear it again? Would you also be his disciples? Do you want me to witness about him? Yes. They were very angry. Therefore they reviled him and said, Thou art his disciples. But we are most his disciples. <laughs> we are proud sinners. We are proud Pentecostals. That wear makeups, artificial necklaces. That wear uh, 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 horse tail as, as, uh, uh, as hell do. That use People that Satan has killed their blood as our lipstick, our fashion as masquerade. We are not proud of sinners. We are examples of Moses. Blind people. Blind. Because the Moses generation were the generation that was fading away. And are you still holding on to Moses generation? We know that God spoke unto Moses. And as for this fellow, we know not from where he is. If you know that God has spoke to that Moses, he is that God who spoke to Moses. The man answered and said unto them, Why? Hearing is a marvelous thing, that you know not from whence he is, and yet he had opened my eyes. Wow! This is a miracle. You people don't know where he comes from. But well, he has opened my eyes. Now when they knew that God hear not sin, us. But if any man be worshipper of God and do his will, he heareth. God has not hear sinners. So the boy said, you don't know where he come from. But he has been able to open my eyes. And this miracle has never happened before in our country. This is the first time somebody has received this miracle. There have been many people, they are doing all kinds of things. But the blind eye being opened had never happened before. Look, check, check in the history. Nobody has done this before. And you know that God has not listened to sinners. So this man cannot be a sinner. God wouldn't have listened to him for him. Because he have a disciples. And you know that he's raising death. You know that he had done so many miracles. Don't you, didn't you hear? That when he went to uh, 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 Jerusalem, when he went to the party, he turned water into wine. Have you not heard it? Hey! Oh, yo. One of your people called Nicodemus. He went to him in the night and he gave him sorry. Have you not heard all that he had done? He had done so many things. Have you not heard that? <laughs> they answered and said unto him, 
Thy was altogether born in sin. And thou teach us. And thou cast him out. They cast him out. You are a sinner. You are born in sin like him. Get away from us. <laughs> Woo! The blind shall remain blind. So long as they don't believe that Jesus is the only person that can open your eyes. Sister, so do you want to continue to remain in this your situation until you die? Ah, Adwa. Sister, change my brother. My sister, it will never help you. Jesus heard that they have cast this boy out of the synagogue. And when he had found him, he said unto him, Does thou believe in the Son of God? Do you believe? The whole question is that I may know him. Do you believe? Jesus has been trying to reveal himself to people from all levels. But because their unwillingness to accept him from his point of view many had not been able to walk into what he has for them when jesus heard that they have thrown him out he went to him and when he found him he questioned him do you know the son of god he answered and said the boy who is he lord that i may believe in him the first time the boy is seeing Jesus face to face. So he, when he saw Jesus with the people following him, they told him, Jesus is coming. The, the man who he is, the man who opened your eyes. He is the one. Yeah, he is. So Jesus met him and said, do you believe in the son of God? He heals you that you will believe in him. To believe means to accept and to live for him. Are you a Christian? Do you live for him? Do you dress for him? Do you preach for him? Do you win souls for him? Or you win souls for Satan? When you wake up early in the morning, people that see you, those who they see you, is their heart turned to God or their hand are turned to Satan? Thou believest in the Son of God. He answered and said, Who is he, Lord, that I might believe in him? And Jesus said to him, Thou hast both seen him, and it is he that talketh with thee. And he said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. He said, Lord, I believe. There are some he changes their physical condition before they will believe. There are some they believe in him before their physical condition may be changed. Don't put yourself into any category. Whenever you hear his voice, be ready to accept him. At any point that he reveals himself to you, be willing to accept his greatness for your life. And Jesus said, For judgment I am come into the world, that they that see may not see, and they that see not, might be seen and some of the pharisees who were with him heard these words and they said unto him are we blind also and jesus said unto them if you were blind you should have now no sin but now you say we see therefore your sin remain do you still go to church And still deceive yourself that this quotation speaks to your heart. Self deception, self imposed God, self description of who God is, self uh, invented gospel, self promoted gospel there are many people in the church today they define god different from that who god is the day that you know him you see him the way he is when jesus came he didn't look like god why because god didn't need people around him 
Because God didn't need sinners around him. The definition of sinners of the Pharisees were any person who does not migrate into a Pharisee is not a righteous person. In the Jesus' era, the Pharisees were the holy people. They were holy people. So righteousness and holiness was measured by the Pharisees. And when Jesus came, they fell. They couldn't meet the demand of God. They were blind. They were living in blindness. Jesus had come purposely to heal their blindness that they could teach the word of God. But they insisted that we are not ready for you. People that call Jesus pains were the synagogue leaders. Any person that believed that Jesus is God, they would throw him out of the church. Any person that would dress like Jesus, they would throw you out of the church. They were able to identify his disciple. They dressed like him. They talk like him. So they drew most of them from the church. Stoned them. You know what they did to Jesus Christ and his disciples. Now they are not doing that to us. But we are doing that to ourselves. We can accept what he has for us. Now nobody will drive you out of the church and stone you. But you will drive yourself out of church that God has built. I will build my church and the gate of hell can never prevail against it. So basically you are in the big room congregation called a church. But you are not part of people that Jesus is coming for. Aren't you blind? Are you not walking in blindness my dear sister? Have you saw that you are blind? You could have seen. Your sin will remain. My God. Blessed are those who sin. Are forgiven by the son of God. For he that the son set free shall be free indeed. Blessed are you, my dear brothers and sisters. If you can come to Jesus and Jesus will say, may your sin be taken away. I personally believe those people who are suffering trivially in hellfire are the Pharisees who had a part in the light, yet they did remain in darkness. I believe people who are suffering strongly are Christians who had opportunity to live in his light but they prefer to be in that darkness. I don't speak to Muslims. I don't speak to Christians. I speak to all people and the opportunity is still there for every human being. Do you want to walk into that light for your name to be changed? That he will bring you out of darkness. And that your life will become a crown. If you were blind, you shall have no sin. But now you say that we see. Therefore your sin remain. Father, here we are, O oh God, in your presence. We accept that we are sinners. And it's only your blood that can wash away our sins. I present the truth gospel that exposes the fake gospel that destroys the human will and human ideas that causes us to humble ourselves that we throw away things that we have programmed ourselves with that we might be able to embrace what you have in store for us. Here we are, O oh God, your face we seek. Glorify yourself in our life. Show yourself strong. In all that we do, we embrace your kinship. As I'm going to lead people to you this afternoon and they are going to pray, I cry that may their heart pronounce the truth and embrace the truth that your truth will set them free. In Jesus' name. Brother, sister, I've said a lot. There might be one thing said that touched your heart so much so well. 
and that you believe that it can bring a change in your life there might be one sentence one word that got you stuck are you blind are you blind the surpassing greatness of knowing him takes our eyes from blindness into the light to see if there is any miracle that can happen to us christians is that the first time we begin to understand and know what is sin the surpassing greatness open our eyes to see the way he sees to act the way he wants us to act and to behave the way he wants us to behave this is where i want you to bring you this afternoon this morning it's afternoon already do you want to pray that jesus will open your eyes open my eyes to see jesus seated upon the throne open my eyes to see jesus mm, seated upon the throne Holy Ghost, do we again, do we again in my life, open my eyes to see my Savior seated upon the throne. Touch your people, Lord. Touch your people, Lord. Are they surrounded their will to you this afternoon? Are they surrounded their ways to you this afternoon? Lord, my prayer is that you touch them. Pray this your prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I believe you are the Son of God. Champion. I believe you Champion. died for my sins. Champion. I am a sinner, Lord. Champion. Forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart be my lord and be my savior save me from my sins save me from my weaknesses save me from my inability above the singing god change me for your glory above the song i accept you as my king let your name be lifted i accept you as my god in jesus name amen continue to be in the mood of prayer and we reach towards you you know many things in your life that are not right ask god to fix it ask god to change it ask jesus to change your life surrender Here I am, down on my knees surrender again, surrender surrender and find me tell him to forgive you Lord, as you tell him to take you off from every strength and every power that have held you captive tell him to open your eye to see more than you can hear and see be desperate for him and surrender, surrender. be desperate and surrender tell him you want to know him Lord Tell him you want to know him more. I want to know you more. I surrender to you. My soul. Pa, 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 pa. Break out of the devil's satire, Baba. I break every power of the devil that has set you in captive. I destroy every idea and information. That's hindering you from entering into the presence. In the name of Jesus, let the veil be removed. In the name of Jesus, let every handicap be taken off. Let every addiction be broken. Let every weakness be seen strength as you surrender. As you surrender, give up. Give up and say, I want to know you more. I want to know you more. I want to know you more. Surrender to him, Lord. 
surrender to your king. Know him more. Know him more. Know him. I surrender. Father, in the name of Jesus, as your people have surrendered to you. I cry that as presence of the Holy Spirit will saturate them, change them, and bring them into different dimension. May your name be exalted in Jesus' name. Amen.
Lord have your way Lord have your way maybe you are listening to me and uh, you have interest to have more of my teachings and you want to send the teachings to somebody who hasn't got access to the, the radio or gospelforus.com now by the grace of god i'm able to send you my message but basically it's going to be sent from africa then if you want to have any of my message printed and given to you i'll be willing to do that but there is a cost attached to that i everything is free but you need to pay for the uh what we call it the postage so you can email me at info uh, info at God's word dot for us dot com or God's word for us at gmail dot com info at God's word for us dot com or God's word for us at gmail dot com you can also come to uh, end time radio info at end time radio dot com you can go to our contacts on god's word you have every information my telephone number is there and uh steven the anointed drama my personal assistant who is taking every care of everything in this area he will be able to email or send everything that you need to you if you're in africa you can contact him in africa go to our website all the informations are there May God bless you that you tune in every day and listen to End Time Radio, God's Word for Us.com. Do you want to know God? May God bless you. Until we meet again, my name is Brother Gabriel. Amen.